Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. I have a infrared camera multimeter here. So this was sent to me to review. It's a review sample, I didn't pay for it, but I'm not being paid to make this review. I have full editorial control, so I'm gonna give my honest opinion. And this is the Tooltop ET14S. I think a lot of you who follow the channel regularly will know that I reviewed the ET13S last year. And I would say of all the items I reviewed, this was the most popular. This is the one that most of you then bought after the review. This is the updated version, the 14S. So let's have a look at this. Let's see how it compares. And let's see if it is actually better. In the box, I have two manuals, one English, one Chinese. I think we'll use this one. This is the quick guide. And you know, thermal camera multimeter, I think I should know enough about these sort of devices. So let's see if we can just work this intuitively. There is a quick description of the buttons, power, switch color palette, okay long press short press change multimeter this means range when they say gear short press yeah this is your hold on the multimeter long press to save yeah screen capture voltage resistance diode the various ranges okay i noticed there is a connection here for current range the et13s could not measure current so that should be an improvement on its own it looks like the buttons which have a long press mode actually show you the symbol. So the bottom one is for long press. If so, that's actually rather nice. British nut bracket interface. Does this mean you can fit this onto a tripod? Interesting if you can. And then again in multimeter mode, same sort of thing. So I think we can figure out quite easily that the long press is for the lower legend on the buttons. That should make this quite easy to use. Let's have a look at the multimeter thermal camera itself. This comes in a nice little case. No carrying handle, but nice protective case. And here is our ET14S. We have USB cable, USB-C, some meter probes, and the multimeter. Oh, and look, a spare fuse. That's nice. That is nice. Well thought out, that. The meter probes are your standard type, not the piercing type, but standard meter probes. What you would normally get with a multimeter, to be quite honest. I always tend to use my own leads anyway. I have preference for piercing ones, but these are usable. Let's look at the multimeter itself. So there's a little screen protector on here. Okay. Does this come with batteries already charged? Power button. Yes. And it looks like it's going directly into thermal camera mode. Yep, I see by the way that menu is misprinted as memu or memu. <laughs> I would imagine in here though, we can actually change, yeah, power boot. So we can actually change that to boot to either IR camera or to multimeter. Let's see. Yeah, these are not touch icons, although they look like touch icons, okay. Enter, yeah. Yeah, multimeter or camera. So we can set it to boot into either, that's quite nice. Okay, let's just try that. Power off. Power on. Yeah, we're in multimeter mode now, and this will change to camera. Okay, quite nice. 
Another thing I'll mention straight away with this, this has a macro lens, which we can see here, and you can slide this across. So it has like a little ridge there. Yeah, it's quite easy. So with this, you can just slide the lens to switch between normal use and macro lens. That's nice also, so you don't have to worry about keeping the macro lens safe somewhere. You can't lose that. I do very much like that feature. And we'll try this with and without the macro lens later. But first, let's have a look online. Let's see how much this costs. And we'll compare that with the ET13S. The best deal I can find at the moment, 170, let's call it, euros. That's without the macro lens. Okay, so you can actually buy this with or without. Yeah, with the macro lens, 184.69 includes VAT, free shipping. It says we have upgraded imaging, 240 by 240 pixels, 25 hertz refresh. We had the same refresh rate before. The multimeter, as I noticed, has added current range now. It uses PC software analysis. So this means you can transfer images that you take with the thermal camera, you can transfer multimeter voltage measurement result chart under USB mode. So it looks like you can't live stream the video from the camera to the PC, but you can store images onto your PC. Detachable lithium battery up to eight hours. Yep, universal battery. So you can change the battery easily on this if you ever need to. And there's the specifications, okay. It also mentions the macro lens works at about 2.5 centimeters. So that should be good for looking at PCBs. And by comparison, the ET13S 143 without the macro lens, 160 basically with the macro lens. So the ET14S is a little more expensive, but not greatly so. Let's try it out. Firstly, as I mentioned, the mounting point here, so this would fit onto a tripod or monopod, some sort of extension if you want to get the thermal camera into a more elevated position. Also, you could use, for example, something similar to this, which has the same sort of mount. So this is one of my cameras I use for recording. This is the one I point at my multimeter, actually. But you can see this would actually go horizontal so you could mount the thermal camera on that and keep it an even distance away from the item which you're examining it gives you plenty more options to mount this onto something okay now let's try the multimeter so again this is not actually a touch screen you use the button at the side there so for example we'll go to ohms and we'll try a low value resistor I always try this on multimeters and most multimeters can't read these very well. So this is from here to the middle, 0.22, and from one end to the other, 0.44 ohms. Yeah, that reads about 1, 1 1.3. So it doesn't work very well with low value resistors. I haven't found a multimeter yet that really works particularly well in that way. Apart from, of course, million meters, 1K. Yeah, pretty close to that. And these are not close tolerance resistors either. 10 meg. Yeah, not bad at all, actually. Again, they're not close tolerance. And now, of course, what we all want to know on this channel, does it pass the Mr. Bleep test? Because the previous one, EC13S, did. So go to continuity, select continuous bleep. It probably won't read the diode in this range at all. Oh, okay, this diode confuses it. Yeah. That's a normal 1M4007. Silicone rectifier. Let's try a 
shot key. Yeah, that confuses. Let's go to diode range. Do we have to press select? I'm not sure. Let's just see. One boy. Okay, and we don't have to press select, by the way. We just press the button up and down. You just choose the icon or legend, and that's all you need to do, actually. Yeah, shock your diode. So you can rectify it. Short. It passes the Mr. Bleep test. That's an extra few points for that. I mean, you hear that? Continuous. On a short and a bleep on a silicon or shot key diode. Okay, that's really good, guys. For those of you who watch the channel a lot, you'll know that that is what you really want when you're poking around a motherboard trying to find faults. Yeah, you don't want to look to see is this a diode junction or semiconductor junction or is it a short? Yeah. Just the sound should tell you that. Okay, so that I like. I won't go really into the use of the multimeter because, let's face it, most of us want to use this as a thermal camera. And I don't see there's going to be any particular problem with the multimeter. But if there's something you would like to see on the next live stream, I can do that. So get into the comments below. Let me know anything else you would like to see tested on this. And we can do it on the upcoming live stream. And if you can't make the live stream while it's actually live, you can always watch it later as well anyway. Okay, so let's try the thermal camera. Okay, guys, this is a little bit hard to show you when I'm looking around the room. Much easier, of course, when I'm looking at the PCB. So we'll just put this on. Switch to infrared. We'll slide the macro lens away. Okay, let's have a look what we have. Oh, yeah, I think you can see it quite clearly. So there's Julie over there. There is the air conditioning up there, the air con. The little green point there, that's showing the lowest temperature. We can see here it's about... 12 degrees that's the air conditioning okay and this is showing you the temperature in the room at 25 yeah that seems to work rather well okay let's try this on a pcb and let's see how well the macro lens works this is without the macro lens just trying to find the best focal point really I mean, that does give us quite a nice view of the board. Let's go a bit further away. Yeah, it doesn't focus so well from there. That seems to be better. Okay, sorry about the reflection, guys. This is the overhead lighting on my desk. So that's given us quite a nice overview. Now let's try with the macro lens. So we simply slide this across. Okay. Well, we have a nice view of all the very small components on the board. Okay. Yeah, looks nice. Let's try some different palettes. Yeah, so just hold the button in. Okay, again. 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 Yeah, I think that one shows the resistors here which is just a little bit warmer than the rest in fact we can see the temperature about 35 degrees compared with 33 just get you guys a better view ok 
Okay. This is certainly suited to close up inspection on PCBs. There, we can see the clock crystal there. Okay. Yeah, I would be happy to use this in my repairs. The way this is designed with the macro lens, you can see if I just tilt it like this, it's recessed, okay? So the lens is recessed. That means you can put it down like so. You're not gonna scratch or damage the lens. Okay. The other little one here, by the way, is a torch. Hold down the button. But yeah, we have the torch on there. Interesting when the macro lens is over there, the torch is yellow. <laughs> Just thought I would show you that. Okay. Yeah, hold down again, switch it off. The interface is nice and intuitive. I do like that actually. I find it difficult to fault anything with this one really. It passes the Mr. Bleep test. It has the tripod type mounting points. The macro lens is well protected and you can't lose it. It's very quick just to flick it from one position to the other. It has current range where the ET13S did not. It has non-contact testing for mains voltages. And like the previous model, you can also use the multimeter while you're in camera mode. Yeah. The rechargeable battery is also removable. Okay. See there, standard 18650. So easy to change if you ever need to. It has a little stand so we can stand it up. That's easy for me to read from this position. And to be quite honest, although the camera, which you guys are watching through, is coming from a very sharp angle, it actually works quite well for you guys as well. Okay. One more test to do, of course. The handprint. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Very, very sensitive. Guys, I give this one the thumbs up. What's not to like? Yeah, does what I'd want it to do. Be very interesting to hear what you guys think about it down there. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon on Learning Electronics Repair. Ciao for now.